everybody, it's Supernatural from the Combe family, and today we are going to talk about living without a refrigerator. Yes, village life. Okay, so let's get started with our pros and cons of living without a refrigerator. So at the end, I will give you my two cons, but I have five pros before that. So let's go ahead with the positives first. So the first positive is mainly a positive but could be a negative so it is that at each meal all of the food gets eaten so you would think of that as a good thing right because here in Kenya we waste so much less food than we do in America even here when you go to a restaurant I've mentioned this in videos before you will never see someone just not eat all of their meal ever so there's no waste whatsoever because the the utensils are reused the plates are reused everything is just washed and used for the next person right so the only waste would be food left over and there is zero food left over so there many restaurants here don't even need a garbage can by any means because nobody wastes food so again if we don't have a refrigerator we don't have opportunities for leftovers or anything like that you have to eat the food that you prepare in that meal so coming to the negative of that pro which is if the person preparing the food prepares too much food then the people in that family feel like they have to eat it all or it will go to waste and food doesn't go to waste here so then somebody will eat way too much for them and their stomach will hurt and they they will not feel well afterwards just because they don't want to waste food right so this was definitely an issue with my husband when I first got here because I have been preparing food for either just myself or me and Safari. Safari's picky, so sometimes just myself, you know, so I was used to that. So then when I had to increase the recipe by Shaha and then by Georgina and then Safari's now eating a lot more than she used to, you know, so it was just really confusing for me. Like how much do I make? I don't want to make not enough because then that wouldn't be fair to everybody, you know? So then I would make too much as opposed to not enough. So then Shaha would feel like he had to eat it all because he didn't want any food to go to waste. And yeah, it was just definitely a balancing act that we had to work on as a new family together. But I still see that as a pro because once you do get the hang of how much food your family needs, you're not wasting any food. Um, so the next pro is you can't buy food in bulk, right? So many foods that I would want to buy in bulk personally would be um, herbs that I would put in the freezer, fruits that I would put in the freezer for smoothies, um, different condiments and things like that. Uh, other people might want to buy fish and meat and things like that to put in the freezer. So they have that meat ready for a meal when they don't go to the grocery store that day or they don't plan ahead or whatever the case may be. But you can't do that if you don't have a refrigerator. So that means the next pro here is that you are eating much healthier and fresher foods. You don't want to have to have the things that you are prepping in your freezer or your fridge to go bad because they've been in there for too long or to have freezer burn on them because you just forgot about them in the back of the freezer. So definitely not good to do that and it is better to just eat things that are fresh. So next pro, which is the third one, is eating fresh fruits and vegetables. And then other people that are not vegan like us, fresh meat and fresh fish, right? So many people here, when they want a uh, fruits and vegetables for their meal, or they want fish or meat for their meal, they go out and they purchase that daily. So, and that has to do with how people here uh, make money. A lot of people here who work, um, I guess how an American would call like under the table, um, they get paid daily. And so they get the food that they need to feed their family and with the money that they made that day. So they go out and they get fish from a person outside frying fish, or they get meat from the butcher, or they get their fruits and vegetables from the market right next to their house. So everything is very, very fresh. 
Granted, me and my husband talked about this yesterday. We personally, even if we weren't vegan, we would not get meat from a butcher because here in Kenya, the butchers don't refrigerate the meat. Yes, you heard that correctly. <laughs> the butchers don't refrigerate the meat. So they want, I guess, you to see the meat like hanging in the window so you could see like, oh, today they have a goat. Oh, today they have a cow, you know? So they just hang it from a hook in the window where there is no refrigeration. So yeah, definitely nasty and my husband was like, I would never get meat from a butcher. If I were to buy meat or get meat, I would kill the goat myself, kill the chicken myself, because that just seems so unsanitary. So that's just a side note for you guys. But yeah, overall, get your stuff locally and the day that you use it, because then it will be the freshest. Okay, number four here is something that we talked about a little bit, is that you don't have the opportunity for having leftovers, right? And particularly leftovers getting pushed to the back of the fridge and just growing, <laughs> you know? So we've all had that experience where like something is pushed to the back of the fridge and then you go to get something or you clean the fridge and then you see something that's been growing there for like a month and a half, right? disgusting so you don't have the opportunity to do that because you don't have a refrigerator right so everything that is a leftover it either sits on the counter for a couple hours until your stomach gets hungry enough to eat it or you just eat it then even if you're hungry because even if you're full because you don't want to waste food so no opportunity for rotten leftovers which is a pro in my <laughs> in my mind and the last pro here is not using electricity. So this was definitely one that my husband came up with because electricity is a very high commodity here. And many people don't have electricity. And if they do have electricity, it goes out often or their solar is unreliable or they don't have enough solar to um, power everything that they need to power. So it's very hard to come by electricity here. Often people don't have enough electricity at their house to even power the lights that they have, like one light inside, one light outside. They don't have enough like solar panels to cover that much lighting. So they will have to take their phones to get charged at like a place in town and they'll pay like 10 shillings to get their phone charged and then go home with their charged phone. So that's how intense electricity here can be. So not using electricity if you don't have to, especially with something that needs to be plugged in 24 seven is definitely something to think about. So if you don't have a refrigerator, you're not using all of that constant electricity, which is definitely a pro. So now let's talk about the two cons that I have here. So the first con is that if you need medication that has to be stored, that is definite, or that has to be refrigerated, stored, that is definitely a problem because you don't have anywhere to store it, you know? Especially on the coast, which is where our village is, it is very, very hot, you know? So even if you go and buy ice, the ice will melt in a couple hours. So you can't even keep it cold that way. So sometimes you just have to not refrigerate it even though it says it has to be refrigerated and hope that it still works the way that it needs to work so for example they gave us i think it was penicillin i'm pretty sure it was penicillin for one of my nieces when she had an infection and it's like a bottle with powder in it and it says fill um distilled water to this line and then shake it and then give the child like a certain amount until it's gone right and it's supposed to be refrigerated but we don't have a refrigerator in the village. We don't have a refrigerator like at our house in, in the village area. So we just had to not refrigerate it and hope that it helped her. Granted, her infection did go away, so that's a plus. But it's hard for even sometimes in the village, like when the lady was giving us this medication and she was like, oh, it has to be refrigerated she lives in the village too you know like she lives in the village area just like we do and so we were like oh yeah we don't have a refrigerator and she's like oh mm, maybe you could just like keep it in like a 
cool area. She knows just as well as we do, there's no cool areas on the coast, you know? Like everything gets warm really fast. So there are many people in Kenya that try to um, act like they don't know like where you come from or what you're talking about, you know? Especially when they're talking to a white person that says she doesn't have a refrigerator. They're just like, mm, are you playing with me? You know? So sometimes it's hard to get by when you live like the locals because even the locals try to pretend like they don't live like the locals, you know? So that can be an issue. So you just have to hope that you don't need medication that needs refrigeration or ask the pharmacist for an alternative. So I think that with that liquid medicine, we could have asked for the adult version and either like ground up the pills or made her swallow the pills so that it didn't have to be refrigerated, but we didn't really think about that at that time. And she's only five years old, so I don't know how well that would have went, but her infection did go away with the liquid, so we can be glad about that. And the last thing here I wanted to talk about, which is kind of a negative, is many preppers would say it is impossible to not have a refrigerator or freezer and be a prepper, right? And I definitely consider myself a prepper sometimes like to my detriment because I travel so often and that's kind of like two opposites, right? Like being a full-time traveler and being a prepper, it just doesn't make sense, right? Because if you're prepping, then you have a lot of excess food and water and all of these things. But if you're traveling, you're moving often. How are you moving all this stuff? Yeah, I have I have encountered many, many losses of being a prepper and a traveler. But I still think that it is definitely possible if you want to, or if you're settling down in a specific area in Africa for a long time, you can definitely be a prepper and do that without having a refrigerator. We are preppers and we have prepped uh, dried chickpeas, dried beans of different sorts, uh, rice, uh, ugali flour, which is um, corn flour that they use for a traditional dish here, uh, regular flour that we use for breads and things like that. Um, what else? Oatmeal. Uh, tons of nuts and seeds, cashews, walnuts, pistachios, uh, chia seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, all of those things we have prepped significantly so that we can make sure that we have foods if for whatever reason there are no fruits and vegetables or they're not allowing you to go out and buy fruits and vegetables like Corona, you know, you still have things at your house where you will never starve. You know, so those things are very important and I think that that's very doable to be a prepper and not have a refrigerator. I'm sure many of you would disagree with me, but I would love to have that conversation in the comments. We also get dried fruit, so dried cranberries, dried uh, raisins, different things like that, uh, blueberries we've gotten. So we have those on hand just in case we don't have the actual fresh fruits. So I would love to hear your guys' opinions on living without a refrigerator. Could you do it? Do you think it's easier for a vegan than it is for a non-vegan? I would love to hear your guys' opinions in the comments. So please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in our next video. Bye.